I've quit watching the news. I'd rather watch something a bit more uplifting, like Old Yeller. Because between the race riots and the bombings and the school shootings, I'm not sure how much more I can handle viewing. And for every broken-hearted mother, trigger-happy officer, and lonely teenage mugshot that I see, I find myself saying the same thing over and over again. It's gotta stop somewhere. Crying while cutting, hate crimes and dateline, it's gotta stop somewhere. Drug busts, terrorist bombs, drinking binges, junk bonds, it's gotta stop somewhere. Homophobes, hate in droves, depression and an obsession with a fake ideal. With fitness ads and Facebook boasts that are anything but real, it's gotta stop somewhere. And the internet bully is fully convinced that she doesn't cause any pain through what she puts into cyberspace. But the tap of fingers on keys can cause far more damage than a punch to the face. We gotta tell her, your words leave a trace and they've gotta stop somewhere. Another school shooting, rooting itself in our reality, becoming the norm. And when we form an opinion before we form a relationship, it's no wonder that anger and violence and hostility are what's being born. Classism, racism, sexism won't speak with them, sit with them, or eat with them if they don't look like me, talk like me, won't even extend the courtesy to let them walk by me without a dirty look, a flirty hook, trying to get some, but then judging her if she's already been took, and me thinking I know something about black people just because I read about them in a book, it's got to stop somewhere. Because it's only happening over a tweet until it's happening on your street, right at your feet, and you'll become one of those 140 characters. Like a sickening cycle, we're doomed to repeat, retweet, but it's gotta stop somewhere. Why not here? Why not with your peers? Why not with them? Why not plant seeds from which a righteous generation can stem? It's gotta start somewhere. You see, we can blame or shelter people all we want, but once they're out in the field, the only shield they'll be wielding is the wisdom, courage, and love we either did or did not pass on. It's gotta stop somewhere. And this generation, they're the best chance we got. been here since the beginning and actually Ethan's the one that helps every Sunday he gets here um, doesn't drive he does now but do, usually he gets here every Sunday morning to help set up the church and he's done it since the beginning of the church so for two years he's been doing it. Um, I know I, I I'm, I'm trying to lift him up but like honestly like he does all the lights for us he figured out how to do the lights he's the one that runs the cords so if you trip over one don't don't no, I'm just kidding. Um, but he just, he just, but um, he's he, he's done a phenomenal job, and it just shows the heart. Like since he's been 16 years old, he's been pressing into God. He's been pressing in just to see what the Lord has for him. And so as he's 18 now, and I just it's an honor to be able to to, to do ministry with you. It's an honor to be able to hang out with you. So I'm gonna let you pray, and you you, you set up our service. How's that? Sounds good. So first, I want to share something real quick. Just. This church has been so amazing to me and so amazing to my life. And uh, so the last two years have been so amazing. Um, I said amazing a lot just then. Um, <laughs> and life's just been getting up and down, up and down. But it's just since the church, I've been grounded and really just been able to learn God and been able to have more relationships with people, more relationships with friends. And just through legacy, through the bonding, through sharing a bed at camp, which was wonderful because certain someone um, <laughs> just loves taking a blanket. Anyway, um, or sharing a tent or just staying up till four in the morning praying. Like, it's just so amazing how God has brought the youth just through legacy. And just today is such an honor just for all of us that are going to be speaking. I can say for everyone that it's just an honor to be up here on a Sunday to either pray for the service, to speak in the service, to sing in worship, to play in worship. It's just such an honor. Um, 
I just want to share that with you guys and say thank you, like all of you guys, whether you know me or not, um, for just coming here to be here, just be at church. So, um, Father God, we just come before you right now, Father, and just thank you for today. Thank you for this day that you've given and blessed us with. And Father, thank you for the not being as humid as it was yesterday and just not being as hot, Father. And thank you for the AC in here, Father. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> but God, I just want to thank you for the service. And I just ask that you bless this service today, that you bless just everyone speaking, that you, the Holy Spirit is just in their voices working through them right now, Father. And that you're just continually speaking to them and showing things to them that they're going to need when they walk up here, Father. So God, I just thank you for that. Thank you for the service, for this congregation, for the people here, for the families here, Father. Just thank you for all their hearts of wanting to be here in any shape or form. So Father, just thank you so much for all of this, all of this. And we pray this in your heavenly name. Amen. Hello, everyone. I have the complete luxury and honor to work alongside the high school community here at this church. And... Um, me and Cameron were just talking right now, and it's just like, it gets us emotional. It's crazy because, like, we, 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 we started it from the ground up. It's called, like, a pioneer. Like, we pioneered this, this, um, this church into existence, and we, we see it as that way, whereas God has already saw this place completely going um, before we were even, you know, alive. But it is just complete honor and blessing, and before I say anything, I really just want to take this moment to recognize that anyone in our church that has worked with our youth, I want you guys to just stand up really quickly. So if you worked with youth in our church, would you just stand up? And we, I just want you guys to see, yeah. <laughs> These are some of the most amazing people that I know. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, I just want to say, I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. These are some of the most amazing people that I know. Some of the, the, these people are what almost mo continue to motivate Cameron and I to keep pushing, to keep going. Because we will say, I could speak for both of us, I know that, um, that it wasn't easy. It's, it's a hard, it's a journey for sure. And it's definitely something that we had to sacrifice a lot, just as everyone in our church has done to be a part of this. And um, even the leaders that come each night, there's a sacrifice that we do. And, and it's so worth it though, that we see the fruit of, of it all. And to come to a day that's like this, that some of the students that we get to work with and sp speak into and, and overall them speak into us, which is even big, a bigger blessing. But just to be here is just, so we just want to say thank you. But I just want to quickly pray. I have a feeling that you guys will hear a lot of prayer today. Um, so Father God, again, thank you so much for what you're doing today. We thank you that there is no junior Holy Spirit. <laughs> we love that, Father God. We love that phrase, that you can work just as mighty through um anyone, no matter what the age is. So Lord, we give you this time, we give you this day. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Quickly just go over the beginnings of what Legacy was. I'm not going to chat too much because we want to really showcase what God's doing um, through these students. And so, like I said, we started this from the ground up. And what's really special about the high school community in particular is that we started the same exact week this church launched. We didn't wait. Um, that was a vision that Craig and the staff had had that we didn't want to start and wait till we kind of built a congregation to slowly start adding on ministries. We literally launched every ministry the same week, which was crazy and wild, but we're like, yeah, like, let's go for it. Why not? And so that first Sunday we had our grand, uh, I guess, opening, I guess you could say, which is funny because we were already meeting and having church before then, but it was like we made it known to the public, like come and be a part of what God's doing. So it was really exciting. But two, three days later on a Wednesday night, we launched the high school community and we didn't know what we were doing and we were so blessed. The Florent family is here today. There's Steve. Thank you. Shout out. Yeah. He's in the pink polo. But um, <laughs> that's the one. But um, I wanted to call him out because he's been like a huge mentor to me. He's been a huge blessing to my life in particular, personally, like the, the moments and the time and, the, and the, everything that he's blessed me with to can also just to be a part of this. Like I am just so, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all that you've done for my life, these students, my family, like everything. So thank you. But um, we started literally three days later, we started at a house in a garage because we had this facility, yes, but we didn't have it midweek because they were in school here. So we had to start in a house and the Florent family approached me and said, we've been praying. We really feel that God wants this community to be in our house, in our garage. And we're like, 
Thank God, because we were praying for something. We were praying for an open door anywhere, because we were like, well, it looks like we're going to be meeting out in the parking lot here. <laughs> you know, we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know what to do. Like, yeah, Craig worked, like he said, with youth for 15 years, or, or 15 years, 20, probably like 40 years. He's like really old. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm saying like, but we had this opportunity to be in a garage, and, and, it's, and it was so nice because this wasn't a garage, it's like cars and oil spills, like mine is. It's, it was a garage that was nice and neat, and so it was very nice. It has, it has like some like carpet in it, and there's shelving, and everything's tucked away, and I was like, oh my gosh, this could totally work. God, you're so good. And so we start literally just hitting social media and going for it. And I know on Friday mornings, the high schoolers have like a late start. They have... Um, uh, so we, we started meeting at this coffee shop, me and some of the high schoolers, and literally that's how this kind of popped into fruit. It just came alive. Like We're like, we have nothing. We, we don't know anyone. We're starting fresh. Let's use social media to our advantage. Let's go for it. So we made like little, um, little cards, and we met a Friday before the launch, and we were having coffee, and we were like stoked, and we're excited. I gave him some little of the cards, and we just hit social media hard. And God turned this ministry into the best place to be on a Wednesday night. I will tell you, that garage got filled out. Like, there was moments that were like, oh, let's have these lights up. Like, our Legacy High School team would come, and we would kind of, like, do our setup, our decorating, or whatever it is. Like, whatever we had. Like, the five lights, and that's it. And, um, <laughs> no, we had some speakers, and we were super blessed. And um, the Florence were like, you know, we had to use their restroom with students that were in their house that they had no idea who were in and out all the time. And like, that's a, that's a big, that's a, that's a tall order. And so we were just super blessed what God was doing there. And so soon enough, we had to start opening up the garage doors because it was getting too packed in there. And then soon enough, we started to like, oh my gosh, we're still growing. We need to have it outside in the driveway and use the garage. So we started and tried it outside and we're like, yeah, this isn't working because we found out that our students love intimacy, which is so good because... Our Lord and Savior is so intimate, and that's what he always wants with us. And so we found out that they were, they were molding to this idea of intimacy, which is something I guess naturally happened just through the way um, us as the leaders, I guess you could say, coaxed them or just lived life. They, 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 earned, they like yearned this intimacy. And so we watched that happen. And then uh, we soon enough uh, grew out of that. We we're like, we can't fit in this garage. They held our first full year in their house, in their garage, like a whole year of us meeting. And this, this garage, like I was saying, it was like the place to be on a Wednesday night. You would see cars lined up and down their house around the corner with these little five lights. It was like glowing, this little house on the corner. It's like all these, you, these high schoolers were just like coming with, in like squads, like showing up, like... <laughs> It was just crazy. It was, it was amazing. And we're like, what do we do sometimes? And just really quickly, I could, I'll probably speak for a lot of the leaders too. Like, I don't know. Like, that was my first time. I, when Craig and the team asked me, like, yep, you're the high school guy, I looked at them like, you have, if you only knew, like, no, I'm not. I am not ready for that. Like, I don't know what you guys are thinking. Like, I, I got nervous. I didn't, know, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I don't know enough. I don't know how to do this. I'm trying to have a job. Like, I don't, what, what am I... You know, all these questions, this panic. And every single night, it was just so worth it because we saw these students impacted to a whole nother level that we, we, if we weren't a part of that, we wouldn't have seen. And so, and we're watching them not just happen that night and we were with them for two hours or hour and a half or whatever it is, and then they, they leave. We're hearing about these things on, on social media. We're seeing it happen at their schools. And then we start getting invited to their campuses and we're showing up there and spreading what God has for us there. So just the platform this church has allowed us to have has been phenomenal. And uh, like we've had our first holidays as a youth group together and like the little, the little Thanksgiving banquets, like my mom like would cook food and bring it over to the Florence house and we would just do our best to be family. And it, we, these students really figured out and, and, and learned this idea of community and love and, and what Jesus would want us to do. We just did it to the best that we could. I mean, my fondest memory at the Florent home was this night we had of worship and it was this time where it was just, I don't even know how, like, I don't even know what to call it. Like, we just, just, the spirit was so heavy in there, and everyone just started dancing and running around, and just the music, you couldn't even hear the microphones anymore, and we were just like, the spirit was so full in that garage at a house on the corner in Ranch Cucamonga. And it was just, it, from that moment, it just became a whole different place. And then we got the opportunity um, an, an open door came to us just around the same time that, you know, our, our year at the house was done. We moved into our first building, and it was a huge blessing. And I don't know if some of you have been a part of the, um, like, the women's gatherings or prayer nights. We meet on Rochester and Foothill, right across from Quakes 
there's a, a church called Neighborhood Vineyard Church, and they're not as active throughout the week for certain days. And um, the day that we needed one of their venues, they were like, yeah, like you use it. We want to bless you guys. And so we were so fortunate for the cost, for how like the times and the days worked out and we moved into our first building. So now it became a little bit more of a less of a setup because it's like set up, tear down all this stuff that we're doing, you know, and it was more of a flick of a light, start putting things in order. We got like chairs given to us, like all this cool stuff. And then from there, we grew out of there. And then, like, I'm just trying to go really quickly. We go into our, we're, where we are now. We're into, in, even into a bigger venue because of what God's doing. And it's the same church, but we're now in their main congregation instead of, like, a, little, um, a littler building, which is still big, which I, yeah, there's great things coming for Legacy. But um, these students grasp the importance of represent, representing God is where I wanted to kind of say is, we were seeing it on a youth group for a couple hours, but they were going and living it out. And they were recognizing the importance of there is some kind of sacrifices and changes I need to do when I'm representing God, a church. And they're really getting it. And they've seen the impact that it can do. And they've seen how much better a life living with Jesus really is. And so, yeah, <laughs> sorry. But um, they, um, yeah, so this generation is just, on the move, and we are so excited and so proud of them. And this moment, like I said, is just amazing. And so I just want to open up this opportunity to have um, a few of our students just speak from their heart. And um, this is just so God set up. And uh, we want to just take this time, and, and I want we want you guys to hear what God's doing. Like well, like uh, we say, no junior Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that's in them is in in us or in you. And and so we have um, this idea that what they have to say is going to be extremely powerful and that we can all really take something and learn from it. So without any further ado, I want to just invite up our first, and she's a middle schooler, so come on up, Anaya. Hello, everyone. I don't know how to use a mic, so I might get a little close. Um, my name's Anaya. I'm going into eighth grade. And... Um, normal middle schooler, I have lots of issues with myself. <laughs> um, just a simple topic. Um, I was always ashamed of the way I looked because I have a lot of pretty friends. And I always thought, I'm not up to what society wants me to look like, so how am I pretty to most people? And even though I got complete and utter amazing love from my parents, I still thought that I was completely horrible and ugly and disgusting. But more importantly, I was ashamed of telling people that I believed in God because I was already a weird person who wore long socks and <laughs> didn't understand math. So telling people that I believed in God was just like the cherry on top of the Sunday. You're the strangest person I know. Get away from me. So I, I never told anyone that I believed in God except for maybe one of my friends. And in sixth grade, I was put in the popular class. So no one really liked me because I wasn't popular. <laughs> and I, I, had a, I had a few friends. And that, that was really the only base that I needed. I started growing, and I got a lot more Christian friends. Seventh grade was the best year ever. I got so, and then I got into Legacy. It was just amazing. The way God works in people, it's just awesome how he can change your attitude so quickly. I'm just happy that I didn't get suicidal thoughts or anything like that, because that would have been just completely horrible. I, didn't, I never want to think anything like that about myself ever. So now I have a lot more excellent people in my life. And what God's really done through me is Help me get over a lot of fears, like public speaking, for one. Uh, <laughs> this is like one of the greatest fears of my life. I can't even do a science project in front of all my closest friends. And this is just, this is just amazing how, how God is like working through me. Like I never thought I'd be able to do this kind of stuff. And um, at first, I talked to one of my leaders about it. And I thought I wanted to do a legacy little Thing. She, she prayed on it. She said, you know, maybe it's not like a big message, but maybe it's something you could pray into. Because I thought I needed to open up because if God's going to work with this small community, I need to open up to people so they can 
help spread the word of God. And um, this is what it turned out to be instead of just <laughs> legacy. And, um, and then summer camp, that was crazy. We went up to summer camp with like six girls, nothing big. And um, they're like my best friends in the entire world. And um, uh, God really, he shifted that camp because everything that was ordinary up there, like we're used to like spiritual stuff and they did upbeat, fast games, things like that. We're like, well, what's happened to the slow music? Like, let's get into the spirit, guys. <laughs> and none of that happened. There was dancing and singing. It was, it was still worship, but we had a different type of worship. And for us, that was just like, how are you worshiping God like that? Like, that's just, well, I don't know about that, but for me, it was like that. And then um, we sort of got into it, and it was so fun, and we switched it. So it was like they had games, but they also, we had a late night uh, worship, late night worship with some of the kids that wanted to just stay around and just worship God. And it was amazing how the leaders just loved us. We were their favorite cabin. And um, they were like, you guys are awesome. You've been shifting this camp. We had so many worship sessions, met so many amazing people. And um, one of the lessons that I learned throughout everything from throughout two years is that God accepts me for who I am, even when I don't accept myself. So he accepts me with my junk. He accepts me with no matter what crap I have in my life. <laughs> he accepts me for who I am because he's, he has this little spark inside of me that he sees when, it's, when you can't even see it yourself. It's like he has a magnet, it's like his eyes are magnifying glass and he can look inside of you and tell that you have the spirit to move within him. And if, if, you, just, if you just listen close to his voice, you can change a nation with just that small word spreading to multiple people. And this isn't even where I was supposed to go with this. But um, yeah. And uh, one of the verses I wanted to share was about the Samaritan woman at the well. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Just kidding. Hold on, let me find it. There it is. Um, one of my favorite verses from John chapter 4 is verse 10. It says, Jesus answered to her and said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. That is to me like, if, if only you knew who I was, who you were talking to, you would immediately drop down to your knees and just worship in almighty glory. And then um, verse 14 says, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become, will become in him a fountain of water springing up everlasting life. So that's, like, um, that's just like when God sees that spark. He, he, he either lights a fire or he springs up a fountain. And it's just amazing how he can, how he can guide you when you don't even know he's guiding you. How, there's all, how you always think it's yourself talking, but it's really God talking to you. How it's those little incidents where you can change someone's life in an instant and you not even notice it. And yeah, that's, that's not a lot, but that's what I went through. So yeah. Something really quickly, it was really awesome about what she had said when she was at the camp that the... Um, She's like, where's the spirit? And it's just like, there's this word to give into us about this proud papa moment that Cameron and I would receive today. And that was a proud papa moment. Like, we are so thankful that, that that's what they're yearning for. That's what they're looking for. And so, yeah. And, and, and we have, like, she goes to the, the middle school youth group, which actually, they followed their big brothers very well, Legacy High School. And they're meeting actually in front of Cameron Moss's front yard to this day. And um, they launched about six months after the... Uh, the, high, uh, the church did, but they were actually, they really didn't in a way because they were having services every Sunday, but they launched a midweek program about six months later, and they are 
busting at the seams in, in, in the front yard as well. So, yeah, so thank you so much for sharing that. Awesome. So up next, we have one of the high schoolers, uh, Megan. Come on up. Yeah. Okay, hey everybody. So I'm Megan Troutwine. I am a senior. Okay, so this past year has been a really life-changing year for me. Uh, I remember one day and so many days just asking God just to show me, um, just to use me anyway, and I didn't care what it was. I just, like, really wanted to be used. Um, so... One time at Legacy Winter Camp, um, uh, I was praying for this girl, and well, she, she was like, can you pray for me? And I was like, yeah, like, I felt like I should pray for you. And she said that she had these dots on her like face, and she said they burned. And I was like, okay, can, can I touch your face? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> so I grabbed her face, and I started to pray. And, um, and like, I was praying, and then we finished, and she looked at me and said, like, man, like, they're going away. Like, I feel them going away. And, like, at that moment, she said, like, oh, like, you did it. And I, at first, like, I was like, no, I didn't. Like, God did it. Like, it wasn't me. Like, yeah, he was using me, but, like, like it wasn't, he, he was using through me. And so, like, I just thought, like, my whole life, like, man, like, like I want to live my life for God. Like, it's not about me. Like, it's always about him. And so um, this year, just I have stepped out of my comfort zone. That's just been a big thing for me. And uh, I do things that I wouldn't normally do. The Holy Spirit, just be, I'd be able to do it because the Holy Spirit was working inside of me. The biggest thing for me is, um, is public speaking too. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, I remember saying that my goal was to be out of my comfort zone. Like that's something that I wanted to do. And as soon as I said that, God <laughs> stepped on that. <laughs> and um, he was quick to do that. And he helped me do things that I wasn't quick to do before. And um, I was pushed, challenged, and was uncomfortable, but I would not have been able to do any, any of it without God. The first time I stood up to talk to Legacy, it was so nerve-wracking, and um, but that was getting me out of the, my comfort zone, and that was only the beginning. So God reminded me of a quote I once heard someone say, your strength comes through when you're challenged. Being challenged gives you strength and helps you to grow spiritually. When you put yourself through challenges and uncomfortable situations, uh, the Lord will give you his strength to help you through it. And that's what he's been doing in me. He's been pushing me to do my best and to do stuff that is so out of my comfort zone. And, um, and I can say truly that God is helping me with his strength. And um, having faith and trusting in him that he can get me through the hardest things for me is so important. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. It is crazy to think how much God is truly willing to give you as long as you trust in him. Let me tell you, that is definitely not easy. And, um, but what God really recently has been sharing with me is that I am qualified. Amen. I'm qualified because he's using me. Sometimes I feel like I'm too young or don't know enough. The list could go on. But lately, God has been showing me that he can use me, no matter where I am in life or what I'm doing. He's showing me that he is calling me as I am right now. Um, sorry. <laughs> I don't have to wait for when I'm ready. God says I'm qualified now and I don't have to change at all. So many times I ask God I'm if I'm ready to do something that he's calling me to do. Um, but how can I tell my God that I'm not ready when he's calling me to do something right then and there? He knows so much more and I'm telling him that I'm not ready for it. I'm not prepared. I don't know enough. And it's all the enemy trying to get at my heart saying that I'm not good enough. But who is he to tell me that? When my God is calling me and telling me that you're enough, he wants me to come as you are. God wants me to trust in him that I'm qualified because he truly is using me. As long as my heart matches his and is willing to do anything, then he can use me. So in four days, I will be heading off to Kenya. And that is something that, <laughs> that, is something that I definitely don't feel qualified for at times. Um, I think that I'm too young. I don't know enough. Like All these other people are so much older than me. And... Um, I don't have enough experience to go all the way across the world for two weeks. Um, so, but God is just showing me that, that I, I am, I can do it. And, um, and he's just putting me out of my comfort zone to be able to do this. And he's showing me that I'm so qualified. I'm, and then as long as I'm willing, he will answer my prayers and be able to use me. So today, I challenge you guys to ask God to put you out of your comfort zone to do something out of the ordinary that you usually wouldn't do. 
um, just show him that you're ready to lay down your life and give him all of it and like nothing else matters in this world except for him. And it might be scary, but trust me, it is worth it. I'll be the one to confidently say that you are definitely qualified because he's using each and every one of you specifically. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. That is a huge step for her. Like she, the first time uh, we asked that uh, if you could say something uh, legacy, uh, she was, yeah, she's like, no, like, I can't do that. And, and like, now look at her, so. Thank you. And the next, we want to just share, um, Eli is going to share something. So get up for Eli. What's up, guys? Good morning. Um, sorry, it's been an emotional morning. I don't know why. This, that's the way the spirit wrecked me this morning. So um, I honestly had this like long list of like things I wanted to say. But on my way out driving over here, God was like, nope, that's not what you're going to talk about. So um, if it seems jumbled, I apologize. But it's kind of just like all going to come out. So um, the first thing God kind of highlighted to me was identity. Um, and it's just, it's when you truly understand your identity, then you can really just act in power and you can act truly just with the spirit as one. Um, so many times, like the enemy just tries to come along and tell us that we are less than who God says we are, or he puts things in our mind that allow us to believe that um, we can't truly live up to the identity or the purpose or the, the plan that God's calling us to live by. Um, for so long, I, I kind of embedded that in myself as just like through family struggles or life struggles or whatever the enemy had to throw it my way. I, I kind of took that and I kind of sat in that and I kind of like labeled myself as, as what that was. And then um, truly just coming into legacy, it's get, it gets me emotional because I see all these leaders and just like these, um, these pastors and these people that have dedicated their time and, and truly just their life to really just um, mold and shape who the ne next generation, the rising generation is. Um, it's just the transformation that who you were into reborn into who you are now. And it's still, there's still so much growth and there's still so much room for improvement. And um, God has just really just based this church off of family and truth and identity. And that's kind of just what we stand for. Um, and so when you truly understand your identity, you can really just walk in power and you can, your words truly have bold, raw, just true power just from the spirit. Um, and another thing that I kind of wanted to touch on, like, um, as I was praying a couple days ago, because, like, we literally found out, like, two or three days ago that we were going to do this, like, this Sunday. So I was like, oh, no time to pray about a message. But um, uh, I got this vision a couple days ago, and it was about all these, like, just Christians as a whole, like, not necessarily our church, but just the Christian church as a whole. And um, God was really just, like, imparting things inside of us. Like, he was really just, like, touching our hearts, and he was qualifying us, like Megan said, and he was giving us these weapons and just this, this transformation inside of our hearts. And then you, you see the enemy, and the enemy is just trying to knock us down. And um, it's so sad because so many of us let him do that to us. And God's like, do you not know who I am? Do you not know who you are? Do you not know who I've called you to be and who I've, I've said that you are and the authority and the power that you do carry within yourself? And so... When we understand that, it, it just it really changes the game because I was once told, like, we're going to see the enemy. He's going to be this big. He's going to be, like, three inches big, and we're going to see him, and we're going to be like, that's the guy that I let control so much of my life. Like, that little person is who I allowed to have so much influence in who I am and the choices that I make. So I just really just want to encourage everybody to just really just walk in that boldness. But, um, yeah, that was really short, but I just really felt like God was just like straight to the point. So God bless you guys, and I just really encourage you guys to just truly just seek who you are and your identity and the place that God called you to be in. Thank you. So I'm Cameron, and I actually have the privilege and the honor, and I'm so blessed just to be able to work with the middle school students. And so I just want to say glory to God. I mean, honestly, glory to God. So... Just being able to be part of this and the, seeing the beginnings and what Eric was talking about and how he felt just, man, our, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for this. I mean, I felt the exact same way. We had no idea what we were getting into when we started this church, when we started Legacy Middle School and High School, and we've just been able to see the power that God has in these students. I mean, my, I talk to people and they say, oh, what are you doing? And I say, oh, yeah, I know I get to work with, you know, youth. And I go, oh, that's cute. That's cool. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. I'm like, the things that I've seen that God has done with these students, I'm telling you, I said, oh, my goodness, if you only knew. I mean, just what Anaya was talking about when we got to go to summer camp and these kids literally changed the culture of the camp. I mean, they literally left behind a legacy. And it was amazing just to see that what is God doing with these students? with the high school, hearing the same exact thing when they went to, win to summer camp. And then when we did a winter camp, and just being able to see how these students are so, their heart is so for God, 
how they really just care about God. What are you doing in my life? And you look at this and you say, my goodness, if God is doing all this through them, how much more is he, does he have for everyone else if he's trying to do this through students? And so what I begin to see is that God is saying, like, these are my kids. I have them in my arms. I'm taking care of them. But he also wants you to recognize that he's placed parents in their lives to be able to guide them in that right way. We're not just their guys. We, they, you guys have awesome parents. And I just want to say thank you to the parents. And if we can just give a round of applause for these awesome parents. I mean, seriously. And so, I, I mean, honestly, it is seriously just a blessing to see what God is doing. And I just remember just one time we were at, when we did our winter camp, and we were doing free time. And the next thing I know, I see middle schoolers all together doing a prayer circle. Remember, no adults around. It's just free time. They're just doing their things, and they're praying. And people are walking by the camp just like, middle schoolers? Like, are you serious? They're just praying together, praying for each other, laying hands on each other, things like that. And they're like, what the heck is going on? I'm like, I wish I could tell you, but all I can say is that it's God. I said, there's no secret recipe to this. I said, this is the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, the Holy Spirit is moving through these students. And so it's just amazing to see that God is doing amazing things with these students. And I'm just telling you, if you only knew, just, and this is just but a glimpse of what you saw today. And so we're in this series right now at Church 242 called Get in the River. And the whole concept of Get in the River is standing firm with God and allowing him just to move you through life to take you in a, a place that you never thought you would go. Because getting in the river, if you understand a river, you get in the water, and the water just carries you. And see, that's what God wants to do with us, is he wants to just move us forward. And we may not know where we'll end up, and we may not know what the journey ahead looks like, but as long as we allow God to move us forward, then we can be sure that he's going to get us to the destination, and that what he has for us is far greater than what we can even ask, think, dream, or imagine. And so these students, they get in the river, They've, got, they've jumped in, and God's looking at all of us and saying, are you going to jump in too? Are you ready to see what I have for your life? Because he's an amazing God, and he loves each of us so much. And just to be able to see what he's doing through these students is my goodness, my goodness. If I, oh my gosh. And so I just want to invite the worship team up on stage. And so as the worship team is just coming up, I just want to just say that having this opportunity to jump into what is God doing. You heard from Megan how she said a challenge, she challenges you to get out of your comfort zone. How Anaya was saying that it was out of her care because this was a big fear of hers. To hear Eli saying, once you understand who you truly are, your identity. See, once you start getting these things down, you can begin to see what is God doing with my life so that I can move forward, so that I can see where he's taking me, so I can become the man or woman that God wants me to be. And so this morning, we actually have the opportunity to say, God, what are you doing with me? You have people that will be more than happy to pray with you. And it's our time to jump in the river. It's our time to say, God, what is it that you're doing with my life so that I can get to where I need to be, where you want me to be ultimately, ultimately Father God? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord, and we say, thank you, God. Thank you that you are glorious. Thank you that you are mighty. Thank you that you are powerful. Thank you that you are the almighty one. Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing through this congregation. Lord, through your students, God. Lord, being able to watch just how the power of God is being represented, Lord, through middle schoolers and through high schoolers is absolutely amazing, Father. Lord, to know that you've placed them in this position, Father God, where they have people who are praying for them, Lord, people who are willing to guide them, parents, Father God, who just want to, see, to want to see the fulfillment of what you have. It is absolutely amazing. And so, God, I ask right now, Lord, as we get into worship, God, will we just jump in this river, Lord? Will we be able to stand firm with you, God, and allow you just to move us through this life? God, we may not know what the journey ahead looks like, it may be scary, Lord, but one thing that we can be sure of is that the spirit of the living God lives within us. And so, God, give us the confidence. Give us the boldness, Lord. Lord, show us that you are with us daily. And God, let us just surrender our hearts to you this morning. So, Father God, we just say thank you so much. We say glory to your name, almighty God. And we say you are worthy of all honor, glory, praise. And in Jesus' name, we all said amen. amen. Say like this. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Come. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall. To you our hearts. Come on. Open, nothing here is hidden. You 
On Friday, a bunch of us um, sat on street corners, 14 different ones to be exact. And we just prayed for our city. And we prayed for our city, just prayed for our city. And, um, and I was in the back and I was listening to the, the, the students and I was listening and, and, and I know like when they're talking, I, I have the images in my head because I was standing there and I got to see a lot of this stuff that, that they were talking about. And, and I know you guys don't, but I, I want to share this with you because I, I want us to get what the students are actually receiving and what they're getting. And, and I was in the back, and, and, and Steve Florent, and if you guys remember, he's the one that opened up uh, their, he, not just him, him and his wife, opened up their house um, to our students. And he was sitting there, and he just told me, because you know, it's really funny, he goes, that garage is where we pray every morning. For years, they would pray every morning. That's what he was sharing. He goes, every morning they prayed, and he goes, so to open it up to the youth and to watch God move in our garage was amazing. Now, when I say move, see, Eric didn't share the numbers for you. See, the reason why we had to move is because the garage could no longer hold the 90 students that were showing up to their driveway. Does that make sense? Like, I know some of you guys, like, we're a small church. You're like, oh, you oh, the five? They couldn't hold the five? You're like, you know... No, the 90 students that were showing up to the garage could no longer fit. But here's what I want to share with you. The reason why the 90 were there is because there was a man and his wife and his family for years before and even a concept of a legacy even were in their hearts. They were praying for God to move, not just with them, but with their city and with their family. And they prayed and what they created was a remnant. Now, here's what you need to understand. A remnant is something where, that God leaves behind. It's something that we see God leave behind. If you want to know why everybody's fighting for Israel, it's because God said, that's my place. That's the holy land. And he left a remnant at, in Israel. And that's why everybody wants it. It's the smallest piece of land on the entire planet. Seriously, it, it is no bigger. I think San Bernardino County is bigger than Israel. And this is the one place that has caused so much strife. Why? Because God is there. God is there. Can we make Rancho Cucamonga that? Can we make the Inland Empire something like that where people come here and they just go, I want to be here because I know God is here. And how do you do that? You create a remnant. And how do you create a remnant? You get on your face, you get on your knees, and you pray. And you say, God, I am here. God, I just want to be used by you. Holy Spirit, would you just continue to move? And let me be believe me on this. There are churches that have this same concept that are fighting for this as we speak. They are doing services right now because they want the exact same thing that we are calling out for. The reality is, is their buildings cannot hold the amount of people that live in, in the Indian Empire. So you need to break down into little communities. Does that make sense? And so let's be a little community that prays with the bigger community and says, God, leave a remnant here. God, when people show up, I want them to feel the spirit. When they're walking around Victoria Gardens, can they just be like, like, something's different here. What a great mall. No, they, it, it's that something that's different is the atmosphere that the Christians, the believers, the followers of Christ, Lord and Savior, the, the ones that follow him and say, that's who we want to follow. And if you guys want to know, that's what our students are doing. They're trying their best. They're going to these high schools and these junior highs, and they are praying for them constantly because they want to leave a remnant when they leave. They want to leave something for the next generation. The high schoolers want to leave something for the junior highers to walk into so they don't have to fight the way that they had to fight to get God back on their campuses. We should be doing the same thing, modeling for our sons and our daughters what we need to really chase after. Modeling, we need to place God at the forefront of our homes. We need to place God at the forefront of our jobs. We need to place God at the forefront of our community because without him, this is all worthless. Sorry, I got off my soapbox. Um, I just feel him moving. He's here. Let's take a note from the Bible. Let's take a note from our students, from our sons and daughters, and let's chase after him. Let's get it in the river. And if the way that we leave a remnant is that it's us calling God and saying, God, we want you here, then we're going to open this up. So here's how it's going to work. This might be scary for some of you, but for us, we do it every Wednesday and Tuesday night. Our students are used to this. Um, there's going to be a microphone over here. 
and we're just going to open it up. If the Lord, if you want to pray over your over your city, if you want to pray over the congregation, if you want to pray for the youth, whatever you want to pray for, we're just going to leave the mic open. So in the middle of worship, the um, Justin will stop, and you know, if if there's a line there, then we're just going to do prayers. Now here's the thing: it's not for preaching; it's for praying. Um, what I mean by that is 15, 20 second prayers that just says, heaven be here. Heaven create a remnant in this city. But he wants to hear it from us. It's not enough for some chubby white guy to get on stage and start yelling at people and jumping up and down. It takes a community to get together and to have a passion to want these things. So I pray that our heart matches what your heart is feeling and we chase after this. We create a remnant. You don't have to yell. You don't need a microphone. It's that still small voice when you're praying in your room at night. It's that still small voice when you're praying in your car. It's that still small voice when you're praying in your work, in your jobs, in your homes, in your community, in your schools. All right. Let's just keep worshiping God. But let's give him everything that we have. Worship is not just a concert. Let's chase after. You heard um, the junior higher say it. What's up with all the music and lights? I don't understand. Where's God? <laughs> I love that. He's in there too. Um, but the idea is where is our heart right now? Give it to him. Give fully to him and let's see what happens. Amen? So if you want to pray, meet me over here. You're going to meet Cameron over here as well. If you want to pray on the mic and pray over it, that's, we want to hear your prayers. We want to see what God's doing in the room. So over here, you can do that. Other than that, we're just going to continue to keep praising our Lord and Savior. We're going to lift his name on high. Amen? Let's do this. So Father, we give you all honor. We give you all praise. We lift your name above all names. You are Lord of Lords. You are King of Kings. And God, I pray that you hear your sons and daughters crying out to you. And God, I pray for anybody in this room right now that is still questioning who you are. God, if they're trying to figure you out, I pray, Father God, that, that you would connect with them right now on their level. And God, I just pray, Lord, that they would have an amazing time, a peaceful time with you this morning. So God, we continue to lift you up.
to be a community, a family, amen? So in this moment, why is there a divide? If you are able to, let's all move to the center. Let's just, let's be family in this moment. As we proclaim God is good, he's never going to let us down. If you believe that in this moment, say it with everything you've got from your core, ready? Say, you're never going to let, you're never going to let me down, yeah. Say, you're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. talking about everything good that you have to offer not not all the consequences god that you that, that you bring not all the judgment all the time but god the love god the nurturing god the, the care that you actually have for all of us god that that feeling in their heart that they get god when they worship
of you when they're here, God. They know that's just not themselves, God. They know it's not the AC, God. It's, it's you, God. It's you giving us that feeling, God. That, that, not the feeling, God, but just the, the reality, God, that you exist, God, and you are real and you are loving and, God, you are calling upon us right now in this moment. Psalm 42, 7 to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. God, I ask that you would awaken that cry in this place, that our deep would call out to your deep. And in response, you would crash your Holy Spirit over us. That all of your waves would roll over us. It's a never-ending fountain of your love and your power, God. We invite you here. Help us from the core of our being invite you here. Help us, God, awaken that within us that our deep would cry out to your deep in Jesus' name. Say, Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. Come awake me from my sleep. Blow through the caverns of my soul overflow Spirit Say Spirit of the living God Come fall afresh on me Come wake me from my sleep Blow through the caverns of my soul Pour in me to overflow many times we refer to like when we say Holy Spirit come fill this place we talk about like the room but I don't want you to break that thought process right now fill this place yourself yeah we are the Father God in this moment I ask that you'd bring vision God that you'd bring healing Lord that you would do something new in this moment God, fall afresh in this moment. God, fill this place. God, a building is temporary, God, but you say we are eternal.
Just the voice and guitar. Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. somebody as beautiful as Anaya and as precious in your sight as she is even mention suicide Lord it breaks my heart and the youth out there God they need you kids nowadays do commit suicide Lord and we just pray for a stop to that God that you would come into our schools you are mightier than um, he was in the world and God that we would just stop the negativity of our kids and the crud they are taught about they are worthless and uh, that life is not precious God because we are made in your image and you love us enough for Christ to die and God just that we would remember that and I thank you so much for the youth today and what I see you doing in my daughter through legacy God and I, I thank you and praise your name and I just thank you for this church and how much it means to me God, I love you, and I just pray that you would, would come on us more. I feel you so much today. Thank you. Amen. I, I, I just want to encourage you to and pray that you would leave here with a new sense of determination today, a new sense of perseverance to press in, not give up. Just don't give up. Please just don't give up. I just sense it. Some people that are discouraged, you can seek in the Lord. You're not seeing a breakthrough. You're just not seeing it. You've been praying. You've been on your knees. And you're not seeing all that God's put in your heart. I want to encourage you to keep pressing in. And there's some in here that haven't even begun to press in. Say, all I have is five minutes. I don't even know what to do. I don't have any gifts. I don't have any talents. Just begin to call out. Give God five minutes in the morning. Give him five minutes and call out and say, God, this is all I have. It's all I have. I'm giving it to you. Don't give up. We prayed in our garage. I had men. You know how hard it is to get men to pray? We had men. I've been to churches and women show up to pray. We had men praying in our churches. Sometimes it'd be one, two, three. Sometimes it'd be me. Sometimes it'd be ten men. At 5.30 in the morning in a garage, it'd be cold, it'd be windy, it's hot. It's all kinds of times. Some, several times CJ showed up in the morning. He's not a morning person, but he showed up a couple times. And, and, and you know, we had no idea, no idea what God would do. But there were 75, 90 people a lot of kids the next generation showing up I got saved when I was 15 and God saved and changed my life and just if one if one caught fire for God so don't give up parents don't give up on your kids don't give up on your dreams God hears you. God sees you. I encourage you to keep pressing in. Don't give up. It may take a day, a week, a month, but don't give up. In Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for a release of your spirit, of your fire, of your power, of a spirit of victory, Lord. That we would persist. That we would show up, Lord. And we would cry out to you, Lord. That you would pour out your spirit, Lord. There's not a prayer you don't hear. There's not a cry you don't hear. There's not a prayer you don't see, Lord. We are committing ourselves, God, to show up, Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name.
try and fall into our old ways to just get through the year, Father God. But I pray that that this be a revolution year, Father God, that we that we change, we really truly change the schools, Father God. That your hand be over each and every one of us and that we touch each and every person that you want us to touch each and every day, Father God. That we don't that we don't care about the bell schedule, God, but we don't care about getting in trouble. We care about doing your works, Father God, in that school, Father God. In each and every school, Father. That each and every school rise up and become yours again, Father God. That you become that those schools become yours again and that you have your way in those schools, Father God. But because we listen to you, Father God, and we pressed in each and every single day, Father God, to see what you want to do. Not what our will is, Father God, but what your will is, Father God. I pray this in Jesus' name. And say, Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. Come, come away me from my sleep. Blow through the caverns of my soul, pouring me to Part of having a smaller congregation is that um, we don't really have to follow a clock because we're not trying to kick you all out to get the next crowd in. The negative part of having a small church is that we don't follow a clock. <laughs> so some of you guys want to get going. I get it. Listen, we're never done. Church should never end. It's never over. We just go to the next place and do the same thing there. Church should be your homes. It should be where you go eat lunch. Church is where you commune with God. So make sure that you're communing with him everywhere you go. Um, I believe the spirit's still moving. And I don't want to I don't want to end it. I actually I want to do one last song. Um, but I know that, that some of you guys are watching a clock and you guys got things to do. I know it's, it's Sunday. So if you want to stay, you can. It, it's totally okay if you guys got to go. I, I totally get it. But I just want to do one last song. Um, and if you have to leave during that song, that's okay. Um, th our bulletins, we got some things coming up. Uh, the women's event is going to be happening um, August 12th. I would encourage you guys to look into the royalty women's event. Um, we also have this thing where we're going to gather at Red Hill Park. We took over the amphitheater on September 11th. And for some reason, nobody wants to do anything on September 11th. So everything's open. And um, we decided, you know what? You're right, that is a tragedy in our, in our, in our, in our, uh, in our yeah, I know I was gonna say history, but uh, in our nation, that's the word I was looking for. In our nation, it was a tragedy. But I know that in darkness, light shines the brightest, right? So why don't we, like, like, let's come together and share our light with others. And so we're gonna, we run it out Red Hill Park. We're going to be doing worship. It's going to be fun. There's going to be blow-up games. Bring friends and family. I don't even care if they go to church. Just bring everybody. How cool would it be if we could see, like, 1,500 people packed out at, at Red Hill Park singing the name of God? Amen? Well, three of you thought it was cool, so all, us three, we'll do it. Uh, but it's not how amazing would that be? And, and, and here's the thing. We, we love you all. and we, we do want you guys to find a place where you guys can really continue to praise, praise God. Here's the thing. If you, if, if you came today um, because your son or daughter, or you know it was a student service and your, your son or daughter is doing something, uh, I just want to say thank you guys for being here. Thank you for visiting. Thank you guys for being part of this. And thank you for how you're raising your son and daughter. That, it's amazing to see um, what God's doing. Um, so that said, I want to just do one last song, and, and here's my last plea. Uh, my last plea. If you need prayer, don't leave this place without getting prayed. Prayed for. 
prayed. I don't know, that was weird. Um, <laughs> but don't leave this place without getting prayed for. I, I know it's, it's an awkward thing to, to, to ask for prayer. And, and we, we went through this. It's, it's a pride that we have. But receive it. Get it. If you have a sickness in your body, ask for God to do something in your body and, and release it. You never know. I mean, that's what the scripture tells us. Pray. And let's see what happens. Let's watch our loving God enter into us at one more time. Again. And so I, I just want to, God, bless your sons and daughters. Thank you for who they are. Thank you for their love, their grace, and the mercy that you pour out on them so that we could pour out to others, Father. So God, we want to praise your name one more time before we leave. But God, thank you for everybody that showed up here and got something today. Thank you for our students. And God, thank you not just for junior high and high school, but thank you for our children's ministry that's over here watching us and hopefully learning, Father God, how to praise your name and how to seek you. So God, we ask a blessing over them as well. So Holy Spirit, one more time, we just want to praise your name. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for being a part of this this morning. I believe it's time to get into the river.
Understand you are the product of a plan designed to be royal Your heirs of this majesty Be alive!